Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. We are excited that you are here. Get ready for an amazing word from Pastor Rick and his guest. You know, you can also join us on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for Wednesday Night Connect. Pastors Rick and Miss Linda have an encouraging, motivating word that will inspire you in the middle of the week. Also, every Friday night is Youth Video Conference. And if you're interested and want to get involved in the conversation, all you have to do is call the church and they'll give you all the details on how to jump in on that call. And don't forget the I kids. Come on now. Do you know that Miss Erica does a devotional every single day? I've watched it and it is awesome and I know you're going to love it. All you have to do is go to the Ignite Kids YouTube page, subscribe, or go to the Ignite Kids Facebook page and like us and you'll be able to get notifications on when those are going to be taking place. Do you know that in just a few weeks, Spokane Christian Center is going to be celebrating our 40th anniversary? I know. Well, we have a wonderful celebration planned just for you. And as we get closer to that date, we'll give you more details how you can be involved. And you know, during this time, we really appreciate your faithfulness in giving your tithes and offerings. And you know, we made it really easy for you because there's four ways to give. The first of all is you can send a text. Just text 509-242-242. 7406. And the second way to give is just simply go to www.scc-spokane.org slash giving and you can make your donation at that place too. And the third way to give is there should be a QR code that you'll see. You know if you just use your camera on your cell phone or a QR reader that'll take you to the proper place. And the fourth way is, if you're like me, you know what, just stop by the church and you can drop off your check at that time. You know, we realize that during this time, there's a lot of people that have a lot of needs. And we want you to know that we are here to serve you. We're family. So if you have a need for food or even perhaps prayer, or maybe you're feeling a little bit lonely and you just need someone to talk to, call the church we are here for you and we want you to know that you're not forgotten and i believe that we are going to see each other in just a few weeks hopefully soon well again we're excited you're here thank you so much for being a part back to you pastor rick good morning good and morning welcome to church we are so excited that Amen. you have joined us this morning at spokane christian center live stream I've been watching you on Facebook, so if you're looking at Facebook, make sure you comment, tell me hi, uh, send me a picture of your family worshiping God together, that would be awesome. I just want to welcome a few people this morning who have already checked in. We've got Lydia Peebles and her grandmother, Jeannie Adler. Praise the welcome. Lord. Welcome. We're so glad that you are being a generation. We've got a grandma and a granddaughter who are watching. I'm not sure they're together, but they are watching. And I just want to applaud you for sending God through the next generation. We also have our daughter, Monica's Mon online. Monica's watching. Monica yeah. is like the best daughter. She's like our favorite <laughs> child. We're so glad that she's watching. See, here's and the whole issue. I think he told her to watch this morning. He had talked <laughs> about did. her. But we've got Erica, and she's here in the house with us today. We've got lots of people, Pam Spears. We've got Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. We've got, uh, let's see, Ed Wright. Hi, Ed. And we've got Ron Herring. All the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma is watching. Glenda is online. We've got Spencer and Virginia. Uh, uh, Alex, she says Alexandria. We call her Alex. And we have uh, Adriana King. We have Colin. We have Joy and Pam. We could go on. We're so glad you're in the house today. You know, Make sure you worship God with us. We, we love the venue that we've all learned how to use more in these, these um, uh, last few weeks, months. But we're really looking forward to the day that we all get together. I mean, it's kind of odd. That the auditorium is pretty much empty. Uh, and we're trying to stay in the lane. But I'm telling you, when the lane turns into a lane that says we're not obeying God, the lane's got to go away. We're getting on a different lane. Amen. So those Amen. days are coming. And just be ready 
to jump back in. When we come back together, we're going to celebrate. Now, the presence of God during worship was really good. I mean, we can tell. You can tell the presence of God. It was great, but it's nothing like when we all get together because there he is in the midst of us all. So look forward to that day. I want to shout out to Jeanette Rourke and also to Re uh, Rebecca Gates and, we, and Mary Hill and Valerie Mitchell. We're praying for your family. We just want you to know that we love you guys. Uh, her daughter and son-in-law were driving to Montana and they hit a deer. And so we're praying for their family. They're, they're all fine. Everybody's great. But, you know, what a traumatic thing. And we're praying for the Mitchell family today as we go on with church. But we want to remind you that we do have a school. Uh, our school here is a private Christian school, and we serve God, and uh, it's a great school. And you can be a part of our school. You can call us during the week. We'll accept your calls. We'll talk to you about what's happening. But also we have a petition that needs to be signed immediately. And, you know, and we've, we're finding out that they're all throughout the city yesterday, there were places that you could yeah. sign this. We need 100,000 signatures to get this up. Uh, on a ballot, a referendum, that we could kick this out. So let me just tell you, in the public school systems, and if they get a hold there, they're going to try to get a hold everywhere, there is a new bill passed that has in it uh, uh, sex education. It's graphic. There's role playing. It, it's very revealing. It's demonic. It's pornography. And I'm telling you, we don't need kindergarten kids having that and it's required of the teachers we have public school teacher friends and it's required of them to teach this they don't like it so teachers are signing these things too. A, 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 a government that has passed this bill that does not respect God nor people are putting us so sign this we need over a hundred thousand signatures and this is our place this is our right it is our responsibility because kids that we know, kids in our neighborhood, maybe your own kids go to the public school, and we need to be on top of this. And, and, and don't be sleepy. Don't be idle. Don't be passive in these things. That's why part of this stuff that we're going through is because of the passive church. If the church was being out what God made him to be, it's a different story. So be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And, and, and be what the church is supposed to be. It's not by your initiative. It's by God living inside of you. You and God be, create a powerful majority. And if we don't do that, we can't blame the devil. Don't blame the devil for things that we don't do. Amen. So uh, now we, we just want you, as, as Brother Tim, great announcements. And, and he's, he's uh, got polish on the screen. And anyway, engage with us in giving. I can't tell you how impressed and blessed that I am. Our people are giving. And uh, uh, don't be, say, oh, they don't need it. Man, I tell you, we need it now more than ever. A and be a cheerful giver. And give your tithe and give an offering. And I'm telling you, God will live in that as a form of praise. As a, a giving is a, as a, as a switch for God. And he moves on behalf. In, in the Old Testament, the book of Isaac, or, or the, the, the covenant man, Isaac, Abraham and Isaac, he sowed in a famine, and God said he reaped a hundredfold return. So right now, there's kind of a famine in the, in the planet, so be invested in that. There's a lot of places that are feeling the crunch. We have a food ministry, uh, and, and I'll tell you, we gave out 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of, uh, of, of groceries and food to people this last week. And we're, we're, uh, we're partners with Second Harvest, and we're one of their satellite and outlets. So uh, the people that are coming uh, uh, to that, we're giving them literature, things they can read, and how to get on our live stream. I was talking yesterday to a pastor friend on the other side of the state. And you know, the church, you know, uh, the, the people of God, the church of the Lord Jesus, we are, should be the glorious church. We should be the place that we can give unto every good work. We say that every week, and it's in Corinthians, and that it's a, God is able to make all grace abound towards the church, the people of God. 
So you're able to give unto every good work, but you've got to have giving inside of your spirit. And if you give, the cheerful giver is always blessed. It increases your grace working in your life. I was talking, we found out and was talking with this pastor friend, and he's been in ministry for decades, and we found out yesterday that he lost his building, him and his wife. 21 uh-huh. years in this building, and they lost their building. Wow. You know, that's, that's not right. That, that just mm-hmm. almost broke my heart. 21 years, and they took his building. Wow. To me, I mean, I, I, it, it's gone. I mean, legal, somebody else owns it. And I, I wished I'd have known, and I'd done everything I could to help him. Everything. Because not only does it affect him, it affects us. And the church needs to have this inside. I am blessed. I am prospering. And so much that I'm able to give unto every good work. And see, if you're not a giver, you'll never feel that. you got to first become a giver. Well, I don't have anything to give. Give what you got. And it gets the ball rolling. It gets the muscle going. If you aren't engaged with giving into the kingdom of God, into things like food and, 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 and ministry like this, and our missionaries and our outreach, you don't kick into gear that mechanism that causes the blessings to come to you. It's a physics in, in the spirit. There's properties. There's laws. God loves the cheerful giver. Now, he loves the lost and the sinner, but there's another degree that kicks in when you are the cheerful giver. Be a tither, be a giver of offering. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to say something. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You have what you say. So let's pray. I'm going to pray this. God, I pray. I pray, first of all, for this pastor. Show them their new location. And God, put inside of them the... the the, the heart of an overcomer. Put inside of them, Lord, that they are to be land owners mm-hmm. and not the, their land is repossessed. God, I feel for my friend. I pray you encourage him, give him hope. And God, I just pray for our church. It's our responsibility, our garden, our orchard, and that, Lord, we watch over it. And that, Lord, it's not just up to preachers. It's up to the house to take care of their place, their assignment. And Lord, we love to be able to give unto you because we know you love the cheerful giver. Amen. Let's say this together. We, I say this, we say this in our church when we're assembled. But let's say this together. Father God, open up the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing so great we can't receive it all. And the devourers rebuked. My barns are filled. My vats overflow. I am a cheerful giver. Therefore, every earthly blessing comes to me in abundance, and I'm able to give unto every good work. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I look forward to the day that we can all assemble again, where we can get together and, and, and uh, you know, in proximity, where we can, at po- some point, we get to hug the family God, we get to give him high five, fist bumps, wrestle on the floor, whatever we do. We're going to do it in the name of the Lord, and I'm looking forward to that day. And I tell you, you know, when they take away something from you that you're supposed to have, and they say you can't do it, something flips on the inside of me and says, just watch. I don't know what it is about me, but my wife says sometimes when we're carrying in something from the car or from the house, she says, oh, you can't do that. I said, just watch me. Just watch me. I don't know what it is, but there's something inside of me that says you tell me I can't, just watch out, because I'm going to. And I see that in the people of God. You can't worship. And I got people that I'm having to like, like saying, you know, come off of the ledge. Back, back away from the window. Don't jump just yet. Because we're trying to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Amen. So we have some guests with us. We've been doing this the last few weeks. I have got some of the best friends and the most effective ministers on the planet. You know, we got the Purcells in Singapore. I think they're sleeping right now. It's like one o'clock in the morning, <laughs> one thirty or so, whatever time. But, uh, and, and then we have uh, Joe that is from Dubai. We had renters a few weeks ago. They're, they're a prominent, effective, going and blowing church in throughout mm-hmm. Russia. Uh, and Moscow, his headquarters is in, in Moscow. You know, we've got Charlie, 
I think it was last week. His ministry is exploding in Thailand. He texted me this morning. And so we got the best. I mean, we're, we're uh, givers to Rhema Bible schools. There's over 260 Rhema Bible schools around the world. Now, we know he- headquarters is Tulsa, but I'm telling you, the ones in South America, they are going and blowing. They just can't keep up with the hunger that's down in, in places like Brazil and Colombia. It's big. It's big. We have great ministry friends. We have some guests with us today that are our friends. They attended our church for a season. They were uh, uh, pastors in North Idaho. And, and when they stepped back from that, they came to our church. They were setting things up, getting some direction. And then when the time came, they launched. And they are now starting a Bible school and mission outreach in Poland. And it's, it's uh, uh, the Spear family. And we have, we're blessed to have uh, with us Steve and Pam Spears. They're li- living right now in Tennessee and because they're waiting for the airplanes to be able to go back to Poland. They're just waiting. So greet everybody this morning, the Spears, and say hi to the family here in Spokane. Hello, Spokane Christian Center. We are so happy to be with you today. Wow. Greetings, Pastor Rick and Miss Linda. <laughs> Before we go any further, we've got to honor you all for 40 years of yes. ministry here Amazing. in Spokane. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being faithful to just give the Never word. Quitting. Amen. I know there were times when you might have felt like it, but <laughs> thank you for reaching out to us as soon as we moved to the Northwest. Yes. You guys were one of the very first ones that reached out and just uh, just said, hey, we're available to be here. So thank you guys so much. We love you, and we love Spokane Christian Center. Yes, yes, we do. Now we can see a pastor. That's great. <laughs> well, not everybody says that, but I'm glad you're, you're saying this. Anyway, um, you know, you're, you're in the midst of things. It's, it's awkward. We have Charlie, who's in Arizona. But you know, since he's been in Arizona, his outreach has increased uh, be, through live stream. I mean, what the enemy means for evil, God will turn around for the good. Right. Yeah. And in the same way, you came home for a, a connect time, a building time, a furlough time. And, and then this virus thing uh, broke out. And you found yourself stuck at home and Tennessee, kind of your home base for now. Uh, tell us, how, how's this affected your outreach, how you approaching ministry in, uh, in Poland and connecting with people? How's it looking for you? Well, Pastor, the, the Polish people there are so very relational. And so what we've been doing is kind of like what you're doing right here this morning. A lot of online meetings, cool. uh, going on Facebook, Facebook calls, picking up the phone, calling the pastors and just really touching base with those pastors to encourage them um, because there's not very many of them in Poland. Right. It's not like they've got a big nucleus of uh, a group of people that they can reach out to. And so just some touches that way. And we've had a lot of Zoom meetings where you're just even ministering the word and, and just trying to encourage and build them up. And because we know it's going to be this this whole virus thing really, I think, spoke to all the churches wherever they were. But um, the need to have strong teams built. And we know we've got to have a strong team in Poland that are nationals there if we ever couldn't be in the country again. So, um, so we're already working on building that team. And it's been good. It has been good. And, and- A thing that we have done to be uh, very strategic with the time uh, because we don't want to get caught up in just having time. So we've been very strategic in taking classes and some things that are going to be helping us so that when we return to Poland, we're going to be even more effective than what we were when we were there. And so it's just, you know, Brother Hagen taught all of us at Rhema that preparation time is never wasted time. And so we've been spending time, online language courses, uh, been doing some other classes that will help when we go back, like I said, when we're back in Poland. We were able to be certified 
in some more um, church planting courses so we can train church planting in Poland. And this is so key for Poland because um, there's, what's the statistic on that? Um, there's 650 right. cities out of 900 do not even have a gospel witness church. Wow. And wow. so the churches that are there need to be thinking about planting other churches. Uh, there's such a need. And um, so this is a, going to be a big focus for us to be training and mentoring church planters and helping them. And of course, getting Rama Bible School started there. You know, we were I, talking. Go ahead. When Steve. We've been talk, talking to pastors there. Uh, we really tried to encourage them how that Rama, our, our purpose is to come alongside them and to strengthen them and to train them and their leaders in their churches and how that Rama can be so vital in getting that development in them and where it's happening quickly. They're not having to wait years for things to happen where Rama can come alongside them and see the impact in their nation uh, greatly increase. One of the classes that Pam's taken, a leadership class, one of the things that was mentioned in a book that she's having to read is that Poland's the most Catholic country in all of Europe. And they said in this article, in this book, that it may be even one of the most Catholic countries in the entire world. Wow. That's and big. so on Friday, we were just speaking of this past Friday to a couple of pastors in Warsaw. And, and even now, they still have to deal with governments not giving them favor or showing them favor and, and helping them out because they're not Catholic. And so they're still being classified as a cult, a sect. Wow. And so discrimination from local governments, federal governments is still very, very real in that nation because of the influence of the church, the Catholic church there. And so a big part of, again, is just encouraging these brothers and sisters that don't quit, don't give up, and that Rama is there and we're going to be there and, and come alongside them to help see God do some great things in that nation. You know, we, we uh, have a young man that is going to school and in ministry, uh, Noah Raver, Raver in, in Europe right now, and he's in Belgium, and he just keeps remarking on what a spiritual vacuum and darkness that's there over and over. And we're here, we got churches that are built side by side in town. And we have hundreds of churches, three, four hundred churches in our city. We don't know our spiritual uh, uh, wealth that's in our nation. Right. They're trying to steal it. And if right. this church is, does not wake up and, and take the rights that have been paid for by the blood of men that love this nation, we're going to go to some of that darkness that's covering Europe and other parts of the world. Yeah, that's so, that's so true, Pastor. And, and this is a strategic hour um, for us. And, and I, I can get into that in, in a little bit, even with what I want to share. But it is very strategic for us to take advantage of this time that we have where there's an openness and even the pastors there and some of the people there in Poland have told us that people are open now to discussing God in a different context than before. Before it was, I've got God. My grandparents were part of the Catholic church. My great grandparents were part of the Catholic church. So I identify with God. But now there's an openness of really having a deeper discussion of a personal relationship because that's mm -hmm. something that they don't know. They don't understand what a personal relationship is. They just know of a God and that there's a priest that will go to God on your behalf. Uh, but now they're discovering I can actually have a personal wow. relationship for myself. That's wonderful. And that's a, that's a powerful step. That's powerful. And we really believe, too, that um, things are accelerating the work. God's work is accelerating. So what used to take 10 years will only take one year. What used to take 20 years may only take two years. So wow. um, that's amazing. We know God is moving even throughout all this virus. God has been working. It's awesome. That's right. And 
pastor we're so thankful for you all and for spoken christian center and your support sewing into that nation and it won't just be that nation because there's surrounding nations that are impacted through poland and so it's going to have a reach that will be that will extend beyond even the borders of poland but there's 39 million people whose lives are being touched because you guys are faithfully given and allowing us the opportunity to go to take rhema to that nation it's a nation that has one christian television station and as far as we know we've not come across any christian radio at all and so god is about to do some big things in the nation of poland and thank you for being a part of that well we're 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 blessed to have that spirit upon our church and the people give into that and we we need to be more effective more proficient in that we we don't give nearly like we could it's a spirit upon us it's a passion that we need to provoke you know there's a verse that says uh, to come out of your slumber in the bible that it's an encouragement it's an exhortation it's a provoking of the lord to where the church needs to be alert the glorious church is not sleepy it's not the five virgins that are have their their lamp empty but it's the five that are ready that are excited about god and that's part of our job is to provoke one another to love and good works Amen. and so how do we do that without guilt guilt is a motivator but we can't do it with guilt we got to do it with passion because of the work that needs to be done so if you have a word today for us uh, uh speak to our our house take advantage of you i know your our relationship is deep and long here so give us some words today uh, uh brother steve and just share with us to provoke us into these good works absolutely um was thinking a lot about what's been happening the last two and a half months, almost three months now. And this, this thought just came to me when opportunity knocks and you know, what, what are we doing? Uh, you know, it's really important for us as the body of Christ to really make sure that our minds are renewed to the word of God and that we don't find ourselves um, retreating into a, a survival mode where I'm just trying to survive and get through this difficulty. Uh, but we're really strategic and we're taking advantage of the opportunity that's before us. Uh, Pam, why don't you share with what we did here in this neighborhood? Uh, well, we had um, an opportunity. Of course, we've been here now and um, I go out on my walks and, and I was meeting more neighbors and a neighbor just came up to me and she heard that we were missionaries and ministers. And she just said, do you think that you guys could do a service for us uh, uh, one Sunday? Um, and we just all sit in our yards and you guys could be in the street. And, I, you know, I came back home and, and I told Steve that and, um, and we did it and it was amazing. <laughs> and that continued for a couple of weeks there. We did it for a few weeks. But um, God really moved and they were so encouraged. And now we've had opportunities to build relationships and witness and to really minister to some of those neighbors. So when opportunity knocks, you, you want to respond and open that, take advantage of that door that opens. There was a motivational speaker by the name of Zig Ziglar that uh, he did something when he would hold his conferences that I thought was really uh, interesting. And it actually has challenged Pam and I with his thought here, but he would challenge the people, the attendees who were at those meetings. And he said, you need to change the phrase of alarm clock to opportunity clock. So when that goes off in the morning, you're not alarmed, but your mind is already turned to the thought, I've got another opportunity awaiting me today. And so we wanna make sure that our minds are renewed to the word that says every day is a fresh day. It's a new day, his mercies are new each and every morning. So it's an opportunity for us to share the goodness of God. And over in 2 Corinthians, Pastor Rick, there's uh, not 2 Corinthians, but actually 2 Kings. There's the story in chapter 6 and chapter 7 of the famine that hit in Samaria. And so we think things are bad and have been bad the last couple of months here. Yeah. Uh, nothing like what they were having in Amazing. 2 Kings chapter 6. Uh, it says in verse 25 that they were eating donkeys' heads. Wow. And 
I never had to that party eat a donkey's head. It even said that they were paying to eat the dung of the doves. I've never been that desperate. And then verse 29, then 28 and 29 tells the story of two women who were deciding on when they would boil their child and choose to eat their children. That's desperation. When you're at that place where you'll go to cannibalism and eat your own children. Wow. But then we go down to chapter seven. We have the account of four lepers who were sitting outside of the city. And in verse two, Elisha was speaking and saying that God's going to move. And there's there's an officer of the king who begins to mock Elisha and saying, yeah, if your God can really do this, let's see what God can do. And even in this day and age, we've got to be mindful. And you've already said it, Pastor, this morning. You've got to know who you're listening to and be mindful who you're feeding your thought life with and who you're allowing into your thoughts, because the world will tell us this thing is bad. This thing's going down. They're dying by the millions. But we know what the word of God says. And the word of God says we're more than conquerors through him. And so who 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 is it that we're feeding on? But these leopards there in verse three make the statement and they say, why are we sitting here till we die? Yeah. We can just sit here and remain here until we die, or we can get up and do something. Yeah. And so in verse four, they start talking about going to the city. If we go to the city, the famine's there. We'll die there. We might as well go to the camp of the Syrians. And if they kill us, they kill us. But if they allow us to live, they live. But there in the camp is supplies and provision. And so we might as well go there. And I don't know if we've really caught hold of this, but when they began to speak, those four lepers, when they began to utter those words, and start saying, this is what we're going to do. They allowed God to come in and perform a miracle on their behalf. We could almost say that that it was a a motion that took, you know, notion that gathered motion. They had to get up from where they were at and do something. They had a choice to make. And so you and I today in church, we have a choice to make. We can get into a fetal position where we're just trying to survive, or we can say, you know what? I'm going to choose to thrive in this time. I'm not going to let fear grip me. That's why when we're walking in the neighborhood, when we're out at the stores and the clerks and different ones are saying, aren't you afraid? We're not afraid. And it it opens the door. We're going to thrive in this time. We're not just trying to survive. It's like no opportunity is here. And we're going to take hold of those opportunities. And so we know that we are triumphant. It says that in Romans 8, 37. And I want to read it out of the passion. It says, yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all for God has made us to be more than conquerors. That's right. That's good. That doesn't sound, that doesn't sound like somebody who's just surviving. No, it does not. That sounds like someone who's thriving. And God has made that. These four lepers, whether, whether they realized it or not, they probably didn't, but they actually made a faith decision that day. Their faith decision was, we're going to get up we're going to go to the camp of the Syrians, and if we die, we die. But if we stay here, we're definitely going to die. And so with that faith decision, God got involved in their dilemma, and God moved. And if you read on down, we know what the rest of the story is, that God sent noise into the camp of the Syrians. They thought a host, a mighty host was coming against them, so they left, and they left all their goods. Wow. But another thing that I like, Pastor Rick, in that account is down in verse 9. And as I was re- reading the story, verse 9 jumped out to me, and I don't know that it ever really had before. And in verse 9, these guys make this statement, and I thought this was pretty powerful. They said to one another, we are not doing right. And you're thinking, why would they not be doing right? I mean, they went down, they made a faith decision to go into the camp. God moved on their behalf, and they're enjoying the spoils, but they said, we're not doing Uh, doing right this day is a day of good news and we remain silent wow Wow. if we wait until morning light some punishment will come upon us now therefore come let us go and tell the king's household this is not a time for us the church the body of christ to remain silent no it's not we're not doing right if we clam up and shut up and, and stop it's time for us to be more vocal than we've ever been to tell how good our God is and how faithful our God is. These guys saw a miracle beyond their imagination right right before their eyes. 
And they said, we're not doing right because we're being quiet. We're remaining silent. It's time for us to go and tell the king's household so that everybody can enjoy the spoils. And that's what we're so supposed to be doing even in this time, right. not just looking at you know, gloom and me and agony, but it's like, God, you are faithful. You are for us. Yeah. And I think, Pastor, you and I were having a conversation about two and a half months ago when this was all starting. And you you said these words. It's time for the people of faith to step up and not just in basically shut up. It's time to step up, you yes. know, so practice what we've been preaching. And That's so right. it's so true for us as believers that it's time for us to rise up. Be grateful, proclaim how good God is. And I thank God for you guys and other churches, we've seen them all over the world, mm -hmm. that they didn't shut up, they mm -hmm. stood up. We know some pastors that have never done social media before. I mean, yeah. to them, right turning on a computer would be a stretch. <laughs> and they're now, they're now online. Yeah. Every week to. they're online and they're telling us that they're reaching hundreds of people that they never reached before. That's right. Exactly. And praise God for that. Yes. You know, it's an opportunity for us to grow and to go and to move forward. And so, again, I just wanted to challenge us this morning along those lines. And, and I'll give you one last verse of scripture in Second Chronicles 2017 out of the Amplified which just simply says, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Take your positions, stand still. Now, it doesn't mean to be quiet. It just says, stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord who is with you. O wow. Judah and Jerusalem, right. fear not nor be wow. dismayed. So that's his promise to us. We stand excited, believing God that the, that the doors to Europe, and that's something that we were going to say you guys can be praying along these lines with us we don't just need polish borders to open but we need european borders to yes, open because yes. our flights have us going into other european countries before we go to poland yes, and so yes. we need all of those nations at least to allow air travel borders to open up for us and so our tickets right now are july 21st for our return so we're believing God for those for those uh, borders to open. And I think Pamela's got a scripture here she's going to share with you. This was just, I was just reminded of this scripture this morning. Was just When I woke up, I was thinking on it out of Isaiah 43. that says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. And now Thank you, it Lord. springs forth. And I believe it is springing forth. Yes. It's springing yes. forth in Spokane and all in Poland and all over yes. the world. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's such a good word. So timely. You know, uh, we, we are in a pivotal time, I believe, in the body of Christ. I believe that we're in a, a, a special time for us to be uh, alert. Come out of your slumber. Be sober. Be vigilant. We've had the luxury of not having to depend upon God. We've depended upon doctors and science and, and, and support systems and food banks. And, and, and the, I think well, all those things are overspilled from the wisdom of God and the strength of God. But if we don't stay sober and vigilant, those things can go away, people. And where you can't rely upon those, financial collapse could come. I'm not a doomsday guy, but I'm telling you, this latest virus rose up why won't another one and if they, we don't stay strong and we are not bold and we are not walking in the powers and strengths that God gave us then these things will overrun us and they're going to stick us off somewhere and say shut up and if you don't uh, uh, do that then we're going to lock you down the scripture says in Ephesians that Jesus will present to himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. You know, we have a part into that. that if, but if we're sleepy and we're lazy and we don't take care of ourselves, we're like a bride that when the, the groom comes, we're not ready. We're not ready. We're disheveled. We're not uh, uh, alert. I'm telling you, I want to be in faith when the Lord returns. We're in a, kid, a critical time. I want to have the right spirit upon us. This week we were reading about um, uh, David, the shepherd David, uh, in, in our, our staff reading time. And we do that in the mornings. 
And, and he was, uh, we're in a similar situation that David was when he came into the camp where they were at war. They came into the camp and he brought supplies for his, uh, 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 for the army and for his brothers. See, David came in there with the right position. He was sent. And he had uh, uh, groceries. He had food. He had sustenance for them. And he came into the camp. And when he came in, he came in strong and confident and, and skilled. He had been tending the flock and been taking care of, of, taking care of bears and lions. And he came in the camp uh, uh, strong, fit, alert, and the camp was depressed, the camp was fearful, the army was terrified. The terrorist Goliath was screaming at him every day, and they let his voice get into their head. Saul was hiding in his tent, looking for somebody to wear his armor, looking for somebody who can take this guy out, instead of him saying, I'll do it. He was looking. I'm telling you, people are looking for somebody that comes in with a bright spirit, that comes in with some confidence, that comes in with some wisdom, and with a spirit of faith upon, a spirit of war, a spirit of I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He came in and he saw a king in an army hiding, shaking at the words of a non-covenant uh, enemy. He was a terrorist. And he was shocked at the moral position you know, I'm, I'm shocked at the church. They're, they're, they're just as afraid of the coronavirus as they are the people that don't have God. They're hiding out from this stuff. Now, I'm not, I, when it came in, I, I looked and I watched, but I got thinking. I just got thinking. This is not a new higher power virus that was not taken care of by Jesus on the cross. It's the same dang virus. <laughs> And why are we letting this Goliath today lock us out, keep us out of our church, keep us away from our kids, from our parents? Why? Why? It's because we let Goliath talk too much. And we let him to where we are locked down and locked out of our church. And the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some has, even more so as the day draws close. And we have a constitution, number one. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. Stop it. It coincides with, 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 with Hebrews. You know, we got to have something inside of us. I don't care what Goliath says. I'm going to be the glorious. I'm going to be the, the church without spot or wrinkle. I got armor. Why am I letting this donkey? You know, I've been, I've been overseas. I've ate some dog that was, I don't know that that was any better than donkey head, but, but I'm telling you, it's all the same thing. We're not cut out. We're not cut out to be in lockdown. We are meant to be the light of the world, a city on a hill. We're meant to be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. You know, this virus is, is meant to be cast down and stepped on. Not to be revered as, oh, this new thing. And it could go on for months. And if we don't get a cure, if we don't get a, a, a vaccine that is meant for this, we could be locked down until we find it. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, the vaccines they got right now doesn't work for all the time. 50% is a win. And they got a vaccine. And they're killing more with the common flu than they are with, with this stuff. Listen. I'm pent up with this stuff. I'm tired of it. See, what happens? What happens when our countenance and our spirit of faith is gone? King Saul was a, a warrior. And he, you look those preceding chapters, he went in and he do dominated the enemies. But something happened inside of him that caused him to be shrinking back and lost the spirit of faith, and it got on his men. And you had a warrior, and they were, they were cowardice. They were tormented. They were locked down and hiding out. And David comes in, and he says, who is this that's saying that? We need to have that. What is this virus that's stealing us away? And people, oh, I don't get around them. I might get it. The old people get it. It ain't getting on this old people. <laughs> we're getting over this stuff. 
Amen. We're strong in God. Yes. And you know some verses, I'm going to quote them because our time is shot, but 1 John 5, 4, in the King James Version 2000 edition, it says, whosoever is born of God overcomes the virus. I put the virus in. <laughs> Who is he that overcomes the world? This is the confidence, the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Paul told uh, uh, Timothy, stir up your gift. I'm telling you, church, church sitting at home that's in lockdown, that's listening to governors that kill babies, listen, stir up your gift. Let's walk on serpents and scorpions instead of putting them in our pocket, walking around town. Matthew 8, 17, Jesus took our infirmities and he bore our sickness. Why are we giving any place to viruses? Why? When he took care of it. When did this virus become the monster WWF virus that Jesus didn't take care of on the cross? Baloney. That's the nicest word I got for it. No. Ephesians 6, 10, 6, 10 says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We don't face this stuff because you've got a good immune system. You face this because you've got a good God system quickening your mortal body by his spirit that dwells inside of you. We're strong in the Lord. You need to say that. I'm strong in the Lord. Viruses can't last in me. I am a graveyard for viruses. It touches me, it dies. Same thing with all the other things underneath his feet, like cancers and on Alzheimer's and diabetes and, and arthritis, all of them were taken care of on the cross. Acts 1.8 says, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If you haven't got the Holy Ghost, today's your day to receive him. But if you do, kick him in gear. God's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all you ask or think according to the power that's working on the inside of you. Stir up your gift. I am the righteousness of God. I have received the power of God. I do the works. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Last verse, Psalms 91.7. We've been using Psalms 91 for the last few weeks. 91.7 says, a thousand may fall at your right side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near me. No evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Psalms 91. So we need to be strong. Pastor Steve, why don't you pray with us? Uh, you and Pam, pray with us as we get ready to close our service today. Absolutely. Father, in the name of Jesus, we Jesus thank name. you for the Holy Ghost, the helper. We thank you, Lord, that you are stirring up the body of Christ in this day, this hour. I thank you for the awakening that has taken place within the body of Christ, that we are grasping and grabbing hold of who Jesus. we are in you, that we understand that no weapon that the enemy forms, fashions, imagines against us will ever prosper. So we thank you, Father. We thank you for Spokane Christian Center. We bless this house of worship, and Jesus, we thank you Jesus. that for 40 years. But, Father, we're not just thinking and reflecting on 40 years of what has happened, but we are excited thank you, Father. and are grateful and are thank looking you, forward to the next 40 thank you, plus years that you would have until Jesus comes back for the church. We are thankful, Father, that this church, the impact is not decreasing but increasing, Lord. We Jesus, speak that Lord. over Spokane Christian yeah. Center. Increase Jesus, in Jesus. every facet and every aspect, Lord. Amen. Increase into this Jesus, house. Jesus. We thank you, Father, for Pastor Rick and Miss Linda. We lift them up, Father. We thank you that they're strong, healthy, and whole and protected. The leadership, Father, there in the church as well and together, and there's unity, Lord. We thank you that this is the greatest hour yes. for the church. Yes. And we're stepping yes. up, we're stepping to the plate. And we expect, Father, great things to occur and happen. And we thank you for those who are listening, watching, Father, who may not know you. We thank you that their hearts are turned towards heaven and they surrender their lives to you right now in the name of Jesus. And that you become Lord of their lives. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. And Father, we just pray for people right now at home that may be being tempted with affliction, sickness. We call you out right now. 
you are a defeated, fallen foe. You are underneath the feet of Jesus, the underneath the feet of his glorious church, the bride of Christ. And I pray for people at home, Lord, if they do not know you, if they're shaken, their faith has been shaken, that you would restore them, you would quicken them by your spirit that dwells. You would restore their soul. You would restore what the canker worm, the locust has eaten. We thank you, Father, for it. Lord God, our days are bright because we do it by faith. We believe and therefore we speak. The glorious church rises up and becomes the church that you called it to be. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we're here Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Join us for about 20 minutes. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you, Spears, for being with us. Have a wonderful day in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know. We want to hear from you. We've got some free resources and materials that will really help you to grow in your new relationship with Christ. Or if you need prayer for any reason at all, we have a faith-filled team that will pray with you, stand with you, and help you get your answer today. All you have to do is contact the church, 509-924-4888, or you could send us an email at info at scc-spokane.org. Again, thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again soon, and we'll see you on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock.